Now let's look at how to add staff. You notice there's a little question in, on the t staff tab. It says, are there any staff? And while you can't work on a square unless you have people actually working there and the staff are the ones who, who are the ones in the square. Uh, as you remember, we have already learned how to add staff. If we go back to the home page, we can see down here where it says staff. We click the staff button and we have already added people who are working on this square. They may not work necessarily in this season, but we are registering. This is where we registered people for to work on, this, on the staff. We then registered people to work in a particular season, and we did that by going to the square info button, selecting the staff, and this is where we add people who are working in a particular season. And that's so we can keep track of who's there at in that season so we can get all the staff together because it may change. You may have some people working half a season uh, who are there only for a couple of weeks and they work in, in on the square and then new people come and they work for the remainder. So that means things changes from change from locus to locus and of course they change from season to season. But now what we're going to look at is how we get to uh, how we add p staff to a particular locus. So we're going to now go back to where we were by pressing the last button. I'm going to use the drop down menu by pressing the button that says loci. You can see it says number 45. Currently locus 4 is uh, started here, is selected. I'm going to select 45 and now it's brought me to square 45. I'm going to tap outside the box, select the staff, and you'll see that it's all red and it's red because we haven't added anybody. So let's start by adding um, those people who are working here. So let's look for first, let's say I'm going to put in the field supervisor. Don't forget to include the field supervisor. I'm going to scroll down. I think this is here we go. This is a, a field supervisor. We're going to add field supervisor. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to add this the square supervisor. Now, if you're listening to this and you are the square supervisor, this is where you would put your own picture. Now, it doesn't actually matter which order you put the pictures here. It is nice to have them in ki some kind of semblance of order, starting with the field supervisor, square supervisor, excavator, and workers, but you don't have to do it that way because they will be reorganized in another place, and I'll show you that in a moment. But let's take a look and find our square supervisor. Let's select. Chris Jenkins here and we're going to add him. Now you can see immediately after we added Chris Jenkins, that means as soon as we added the, the uh, square supervisor, that is no longer red because the very minimum a square is going to need a square supervisor. You may not have any uh, other excavators, but you at least need a square supervisor. Uh, in some seasons, I have worked as a square supervisor, a field supervisor, and I had a couple of Jordanian workers for me, working for me. Uh, so I didn't have any other people who were working for me. Now let's find a person who can actually dig in the square. So we're going to look for an uh, excavator here. So we're going to add an excavator. And now I have uh, three ex we have three people in the square. Now what is nice with this feature is that you can also look at these in a, in a different place. We can look at them where all the pictures are located. And the way you get to the, the photos page is to, to click a little camera button. Can you see the little camera button in Supervisor, Pottery, and Artifact? There's this little camera button in the upper left hand uh, corner of the button. This is kind of a hidden feature. And if you click that, notice what it does. It takes you right to a photos page. And it has photos for artifacts, pottery, supervisor, top down, top plans, and square and staff. So let's take a look. And what we're going to do is we're going to tap the staff button. Okay, now what we see is, is that the field supervisor has a, a box, the square supervisor has a box, and now it's going to organize all of those who are excavating in the square. And if you're not familiar with um, the difference between an excavator and a worker, an excavator is a person who volunteers, maybe it's a graduate student, an undergraduate student, or somebody who learned about the excavation and they've come to work on the project. And workers are those who actually get paid. So let's add, let's go here and add a worker. Here we have uh, Mustafa Al-Jarma. We're going to add 
him to the page. And you can see that it has added him in a different column because he has been grouped with the workers. The excavators have been grouped with the excavators. We can add another excavator. Let's say that we add, here we go, let's add Devorah as an excavator. And you can see again, her picture is now amongst the excavators and is separated from the workers. That's so that you know who's who in the project. And it's very important to keep track of who's working on your project. And one thing that I want to remind you of, um, many times we have forgotten to take a picture of our Jordanian workers or workers of whatever project that, that is those who actually live in the country who work on the project. Um, so we don't want to forget them because it's important to keep a record of everyone as these workers have done a lot uh, for our projects. And so we want to remember uh, to include them and take the picture. Now, when I um, take a look, if we go back again, there were three places in which we put photographs. And the first place, uh, if we go back, remember, was, and we're going to go back to the home page, was in the staff. We registered everybody in the staff. And if we look here now, I can see a picture of Chris Jenkins. And just for a moment, I want you to notice something about this picture. First of all, this is the way we want to see the photo. If you're going to take a picture, make sure that you take a picture of the face, not somebody far off in the distance where we can't see them, not somebody with sunglasses on or a big floppy hat that covers their face. Here he does have a hat, but it doesn't really obscure his face, and we do have a good picture uh, of him, and so we can see him very clearly. But I also want you to notice in the column on the right side where it says Season Square and Locus, it shows you that Chris Jenkins is now registered as the supervisor of uh, the Earth Locus 2019 M9 Locus 45. And if we go to Jessica, we'll select Jessica here, you can see that she has also been added there. You can see now that she is 2019 M9 Locus 45. So this is a really handy feature. There is, that's the staff um, version. Now we're going to go back to where we left off. We're going to go to our staff, and I'm just going to take us back to the staff, like so and we're going to use the button to take us to 45. So here we have Locus 45, and here are the ones that we've added thus far. And you can see we have Jessica Devora and Mustafa who are currently working on Square. And so let's suppose we go in, we're going to add somebody else. Let's say we're going to add, okay, here's Megan. We're going to add Megan Bauman and say, uh, oh, wait a minute, oops, I made a mistake. She's not in this Locus. She didn't come until two weeks later. What do I do? Well, you can't actually remove somebody from this page, but you can by clicking the return button and then the staff tab. We can see there she is, Megan Bauman, and then what we're going to do is we're going to select the delete button, click the delete, it asks you, do you want to permanently delete this from the record? Yes, what this means is, is that once you remove it from here, they're going to be removed from the locus not from the square, from the locus, because we've already registered her in the square, we can go and go from that pool of photos and add her back if she is working in another locus. But she's not working in this locus, it's somebody else who's working in this locus. Let's see who else could be working in our locus here. Uh, let's say it was Megan, that's who was working. And we're going to select there, and you can see now Megan has returned, has, is now added. Uh, now if I want, I can go back again and select that little camera button, go back to the staff page, and there you can see that Megan has been added. Now I want you to also notice that what happens when we get to the end, we have more than six people working in a square. It's quite possible that you might have more than three Jordanians. So you might have more than six excavators. It's unlikely, but it is possible depending on the size of your square and how much you're trying to accomplish. But if you look at the workers, we might have, in addition to Mustafa, we might have um, maybe Mohammed, and then maybe in addition to Mohammed, we might have how about Kelsey. So they're all working in this as workers, getting paid. Okay, so they're both all getting paid. But wait a minute, what if I have somebody else who's going to be either a worker or an excavator? Well, that's what why these boxes that Kelsey is in now has these arrows. And what the arrows do is they allow you to scroll. You can click on that and go to the next one. If I were to add another person, then I could another worker, then um, she would go there. Let's see if I have anybody. I think I do. I added this one. 
We're going to add him and then see what happens. So do you now notice what has happened? Kelsey's face is still there, but you can see that the bar is a little bit different on the right side. If I tap that little arrow button, let's see if I can do this. Bring it up a little bigger and I can scroll. And you see I just scrolled up and now there is Austin's face. So there's Kelsey and there's Austin. And the same is true. I, and in order to so notice I, I tapped on it and made it bigger to make it smaller. I just pinched and it made it smaller. So here I can now see that there is a, a similar thing for excavators. If you have more than six excavators, it'll fill in that and you can keep scrolling through. What happens when we return, we go back to 45, look at the staff. You can see here if I go to that same place, there's Kelsey uh, and I scroll below that. Again, we're going to bring it up so I can get a hold of it. Scrolled up, there we go. And there you can see Austin, our worker, is there. I can scroll up and I can scroll down. Now, here's another thing. Um, on this page, they're just, the people appear in whatever order you put them in. So I may add another person. Let's say that I'm going to add somebody else who's going to work in our square. Uh, let's see who else. Let's choose this person here. We add, and where did they go? Well, they went in the same box just below. You can see this person has gone just below Austin. All right. So on this page, we can continue to add more people, and we can continue to delete people. Like, well, we're going to delete Austin here. Yes, we're going to delete Austin. And we can... Um, scroll back and forth as we see there. Now what happens if I delete, uh, let's say that I delete Megan here and I'm going to delete her. You can see all the pay photographs shifted over. So now there's only one in that scrolling box. Just one and that's May Molly here. So that's how this works. That's sort of the basic uh, outline of how it works. And uh, if you have any questions on this, uh, just uh, see your um, manual, but let's take a look at some of the other features that we have here within the Earth Locus and other similar types of loci.